Well, hello everyone. This is your friendly neighborhood pastor coming to you from Christ the King Lutheran Church. We're getting ready this weekend for the fourth Sunday after Easter. And this Sunday is often called Good Shepherd Sunday since that's the this is the weekend of Easter that we most usually focus on John chapter 10, the extended uh, discourse on, on Jesus being the Good Shepherd. But this week, he doesn't call himself the Good Shepherd. He calls himself the gate of the sheep, the door of the sheep. So a different metaphor, a different image, uh, word picture of Jesus being used this week. So uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and read this, read this passage for you from John chapter 10. And then give you some thoughts and reflections on it as well. From John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they didn't understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. So in this passage, the beginning of John chapter 10, we get a number of different <clears throat> um, images that Jesus uses for himself, calling himself the gate, some translations, the door, uh, and not included in this text, but in, in chapter uh, 10, verse 11, the very first verse that uh, we, we miss out on, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. So there's uh, lots of different images that John is using here, <clears throat> that Jesus uses in John's gospel to portray uh, his identity, his mission, his role, and each one of them kind of uh, have a little different piece of the puzzle that help us put together who is this mystery of who Jesus is, how God has become man in Jesus Christ, the word has become flesh, dwelt among us. Here he is calling himself the gate, the door of the sheep, uh, a little bit later calling himself the good shepherd. John chapter 14, he'll call himself, the, John 11, he'll call himself the resurrection and the life. John 14, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Way back in John chapter 6, he is the bread of life. John chapter 5, uh, he talks about the water of life, alluding to the Holy Spirit. So a lot of different images John uses to help portray and unveil the mystery that is God. And so uh, some, some other things to take note of here <clears throat> is the importance of um, listening. Jesus talks about the sheepfold in, in, in John's community, perhaps uh, Ephesus is, is traditionally where John and his uh, church was kind of located. Um, it's kind of an image of the church, the, the, the sheepfold, the, the shepherd uh, as a pastor watches the flock, the flock of God being being the church. So it could be a little bit of, of that going on there where John is reflecting back in Jesus' words. Um, some of the issues that <clears throat> are, are going on of, of people being led astray by false teachers, by false doctrine. And uh, we encountered this in, in Jesus' life as well. Just in chapter 9, Jesus heals a man who is born blind. Never before in the world has someone healed a man born blind, but Jesus did that. And, and the, the leaders, the quote-unquote the shepherds of, of Israel, um, clearly miss what is right before them. And then that's why Jesus launches into John chapter 10, talking about who is the good shepherd, who are true shepherds, and who is the flock and who can lead the flock. And, and the flock will know the voice of the shepherd because, well, they've spent time with the shepherd and, and they will they will follow him. So you get those images uh, of listening being, being very important. Listening, of course, being a an image of discipleship, a word of, of discipleship, just like um, following because sheep follow um, the shepherd. And so there's some discipleship language going on here as well. Um, we've got the image of salvation being used here, of Jesus being the gate. 
and and I and that's an image borrowed from ancient agrarian society, of course, where the shepherd would sit by the gate and no one could come in or go out, and so it's kind of this protective imagery, um, kind of the image we get in in Psalm twenty three: "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters; he restores my soul." Um, and so you get that image. Uh, and Jesus will pick up on this again later in John chapter 14, where he says he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So there's this um, this toggling between the, the, the inclusive language of God wanting other sheep to be a part of his fold of Jesus, talking about other sheep that, that the Lord has chosen. Maybe there's a little predestination language going on there. Um, but that's later in John chapter 10, not in this text. <clears throat> But regardless, there's there's some there's salvation language here. Those who enter by Jesus, not by their own way, not by their own works, not through other ways, through other means, methods, gods, programs, self help, whatever. But through Jesus, that that's how salvation comes. Is through Jesus, through the, Him who is the gate. Now, a part of me wonders, is Jesus using a little bit of the language here from way back in Exodus, uh, where we hear about the language of of um, the 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 Lord passing over the the doors that are covered with the Lamb's blood, um, you know, from from Exodus chapter ten and eleven. Is that some of the language Jesus is picking up on here? Uh, maybe, um, and you know, John is big on that, using lots of different Old Testament language in in different ways. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that you know, there's a whole lot going on, and, and this is very typical of John's gospel, where he uses so much language. And the language he uses is, is, is so rich and so powerful and so varied because there's a number of different echoes, not only in, got in John's own gospel, but throughout the biblical canon, um, that there's lots of different ways that someone could go uh, with this. One final um, thought, the importance of, of a shepherd. Um, <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter uh, 4, Paul talks about um church leaders being shepherds, pastors being shepherds, teachers being shepherds. And I think that's an important image for the church today, for pastors and leaders in the church, that they shepherd um, the people. Let me just double check my source here, make sure that's Ephesians 4. Um, I think it's somewhere. Well, it's somewhere in Ephesians chapter 4 or chapter 2. But regardless, it's it's in there. So, um, so the, the image of shepherd is very important. But certainly in the Old Testament, Abraham was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. David was a shepherd. Um, Ezekiel 34, the Lord talks to Ezekiel and tells him about the, the shepherd who is going to be himself. God himself will be the good shepherd. and all, But also the shepherd will be of the lineage of David towards the end of Ezekiel 34. And so you've got a lot of language of shepherds in the Old Testament, but also... Um, in in the new, and of course, First Peter chapter five talks about Jesus being our um, good shepherd, which is also one of the the the, the readings um, for this weekend. Uh, that's from First Peter chapter two, though. So Peter, First Peter chapter two, and First uh, Peter chapter five talks about shepherds, uh, Jesus being the shepherd, but also leaders in the church being shepherds. So lots of different imagery going on here. So uh, jump in wherever you feel like it. It, it. There's lots of good, rich stuff there. Um, as we follow our shepherd from this life into the next, but listening to his voice when and wherever we can. So may God bless you and lead you and guide you as, as you listen to his voice in Holy Scripture, in the word being preached this weekend. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. God bless. Bye.